Well, hey, good afternoon, everybody. Today's March 17th of 2023. And um, I have a dream I'd like to share with you. And um, I find it to be very encouraging. And actually what this is going to be is a, this dream is a second part to the dream I had the other day with God will gather his flock. And I will put a link to that dream in the description box below um, so that you can get a full understanding of how this dream will tie into the previous dream that I had. I'm not going to go over the previous dream again. Uh, you can just go listen to it uh, if you if you choose to do so. So before I tell you this dream, I'm going to go over this Bible scripture and I'm going to read you about the uh, the, the parable about the, the seed of the sower. Okay, so I'm in Matthew chapter 13. Okay, now, so I'm going to read this to you and then I will tell you the dream. Uh, Matthew chapter 13, the same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside and great multitudes were gathered together unto him so that he went into a ship and sat and the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow, and when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up, because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. Some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Well, he answered them and said unto them, Because it is given unto them, oh, excuse me, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing not, because they see, excuse me, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your, eye, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When any one heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which would receive seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed into a stony place is the same as he that heareth the word, and, an, and anon with joy received it. Yet hath he no root. In himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, by and by he is offended. He also that received seed among the thorns is that is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he hath become unfruitful. But he that received seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it which also beareth fruit and bring forth some a hundred, some sixty, and some thirty. Okay? And I will just go ahead and read a little bit further. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and, and brought forth, fruit then appeared the tares also so the servants of the householder came and said unto him sir 
Dost not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy has done this. The servant said unto him, Well, uh, wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Okay, now, so, my first dream about God, God will gather his flock, I covered a part, and I was telling you about how the chickens, the different, the, the bad flock and the good flock of chickens, they look the same, and I had to separate the bad flock from the good flock, and I told you how they are re symbolic of the tares and the wheat, okay? So now, here is my dream from, uh, not last night, but it was the night before last night I had this dream. So what I saw, I saw a skeleton of a chicken. I saw the head and the spine as the complete skeleton of the chicken laying on top of dirt. Approximately one inch over from that skeleton, I saw something in the dirt. Something was covered up and I saw it moving. I brushed the dirt I brushed the dirt from it and saw that it was a live chicken, a full, healthy, fluffy chicken. It was scared and I was comforting it. Okay? So this particular chicken there was so we have two chickens here. The skeleton represents the tear, the bad flock, okay? They are this one. This is this seed. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and for, forthwith they sprung up. So the seed, you know, fell on a stony place, and at first it sprung up quickly because it had no deepness of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. Okay? So the skeleton chicken, it was not deeply rooted. Okay? That seed. The, that bad flock, okay, the tear, that's what this represents. And about one inch away from the skeleton, there was a beautiful, full, healthy, fluffy chicken that was in this dirt, and it had grown. It had produced itself because this one, this other chicken that was a good chicken, but other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty, right? It was deeply rooted, okay? It was deeply rooted in Christ. That's why it was able to grow and to be full and healthy, okay? Now, and I was comforting it. Now, it was scared, okay? Now, the fact that these two chickens were like an inch apart, these are just showing about the wheat and the tares, how, um, you know, the wheat, it's already planted and stuff, but the enemy came and, and put the seed of the tares in right alongside the wheat. The tares were planted right alongside the wheat. So this is symbolic of the skeleton and the chicken, the good chicken, the bad, the bad chicken and the good chicken being planted so close together. The enemy did this. The enemy crept in and did this. Now, let me just show you. At the end, I pulled the chicken out of the, um, it was scared. The chicken was scared, and I was comforting it. I was holding on to it and loving on it and comforting it. Watch this. Now, this is Matthew chapter 13. He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. So, they're comforted. At the end of all of this, the good seed, 
the one that endures, the one that is deeply rooted in Christ, you endure and you will be comforted at the end of your race. Okay. When you're harvested, right? Okay. The harvest is the end of the world and the reapers are the angels. Okay. So, uh, the son of man shall send forth his angels and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity and shall cast them into the furnace of fire that shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as a son in the kingdom of their father who hath ears to hear, let them hear. Okay. So okay, let's read this again. The kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field. Ooh, there we go. Look at this. This chicken was under the dirt right? Like a treasure. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field, the which when a man hath found, he hideth and for joy, therefore goeth and selleth all that he hath and buyeth that field. Okay. So just endure, keep enduring. All right. Please. Uh, if you want to see the, the entire, um, messages come together, go in the description box and watch the first part uh, I, I had no idea that the lord was going to give me another dream of uh showing continuing on with this uh the bad flock and the good flock i, I had no idea so i'm going to label this particular video part two um god will gather his flock seed of the sower and then the first one i'm going to go back and put part one okay so, all right, God bless you. God bless your family. God bless your animals on this day. I have another dream from uh, this morning that I will be uh, working on putting out probably tomorrow. Okay, so God bless you. God bless your family. God bless your animals on this day. Goodbye.